Good afternoon and welcome to AIADA's Auto Talk. I'm your host, Rachel Soleimani. Before I introduce today's presenter, a few quick reminders as always. Everyone that is registered for today's program will receive a copy by the end of next week. And if you have any questions, feel free to enter them into the lower right side of your interface under the Q&A bar. Now I'd like to introduce Doug Austin, President of Strategic Source. Doug started Strategic Source, a spend management consulting company back in 2000 with a mission to help organizations reduce their indirect expenses. Strategic Source is AIADA's newest affinity partner, and we're so glad to have them on. So, Doug, I'll let you take it away. Well, thank you so much, Rachel, and welcome, and thank you to all the AIADA members today. The uh, webinar that you've chosen to attend, and I'm glad you did, is Maximizing 2021 Profit Through Aggressive Expense Control. Sales are strong in dealerships right now. Uh, all brands seem to be doing quite well, but uh, will that continue? And if it, if it doesn't continue, you're going to need a plan to attack expenses. It would be a good idea to do that now, even though sales are strong. But we're going to give you some tips today to, to help you identify many levers that you can pull, many buttons you can push to identify expense reductions in your dealership and ultimately improve profitability. So with that, we'll get started. Um, this is just a little bit about uh, strategic source. As Rachel said, we were a spend management company. We've been in business in the dealership space for about 20 years. We have experience in about 130 expense categories. And I'll share that with you as we, as we go so you understand what the scope of opportunity is. We're going to talk a little bit about uh, the pressure dealerships are under to reduce costs and improve profitability. And then we'll outline some actual expense categories that you can take that information and, and uh, begin using it right away. And it's my understanding that Rachel is going to make this presentation available for everybody. So if you uh, have questions or you see some of the tools in here, uh, you will have that available after the presentation. Spend management has been described by many as the last gold mine for management to control direct and indirect costs. Why is that? Well, if organizations are focused on top line revenue, everything's coming in, we really don't have to worry too much about expense control. Um, that That's very typical in the dealership space where 95% of the dealers are decentralized, meaning uh, various people in the departments are responsible for managing expenses. Um, Research says that if you centralize procurement, you can take 25% out. And that's been our experience at, at Strategic Source, that that 25% is absolutely legitimate. So let's talk about your profit improvement opportunity. Spend management really can, uh, can bring the following benefits to your organization. It can improve cash flow, it can help you save time, It'll improve team accountability, improve efficiency and effectiveness, and certainly reduce risk um, by dealing with fewer suppliers rather than many more suppliers. Spend management is really made up of six key parts. The spend analysis on the front end, looking at the data. Number two, developing a plan. Three is the sourcing of those expense categories. Then four is implementing. Five is managing those categories, and then six is the supplier audits and even internal audits, making sure that your employees are using the right supplier and then that the supplier is charging the right price and the right business terms. So what is the opportunity for either cost reduction or profit improvement opportunity for a dealership group? Well, we know based on, on different revenue bands, you're going to spend at a minimum 4%. Some groups will spend five. Some small dealerships we've seen can spend as much as 9% of revenues on, on uh, supplies and services, but we're going to be very conservative here. <laughs> so a $25 million group will have about a million dollars in spend on supplies and services uh, at, at 4%. The average savings is 25%. We're going to be conservative again and say that's only 18%. And so we're saying for a $25 million dealership that has not centralized procurement, you could probably pull another $180,000 out in new cost reductions, i.e. new profitability. For a $300 million group, 
that number translates to about 2.160 million. So the, the numbers can be pretty compelling. And, that, and keep in mind, this is an annual number. This is not a five-year number or, or a three-year number. This is annual. So the question you should ask is, you know, those cost savings are going to flow to the bottom line. What kind of sales do you need to generate uh, to to generate that kind of net? Most dealers are in the two and a half to three and a half percent net profit space. So this, as additional net profit to your organization, should be pretty appealing. So eight major major benefits of spend management. Uh, effective spend management program will certainly hard dollar cost reductions that are measurable. We can prove it. Supply based reductions that will reduce back office time. Fixed pricing for 12 months or more. You don't have to worry about pricing changing all the time if you've negotiated uh, properly on the front end. That pricing will be auditable. We can prove it um, through audits and looking for supplier compliance. Standardization of supplies and services. You know, make sure that everybody in the organization is getting the $8 steel stapler, not the $20 brass stapler. So standardize on the low cost items. Consumption visibility. We want to be able to see what kind of consumption is going on whenever we're interested in looking at it. We want a controlled process with purchasing approvals and structure. We don't want Everybody bringing new suppliers into the equation and adding costs, we want a, a limited controlled process. And then finally, we want online access to suppliers, pricing, and contracts. We want to be able to see what the offering is that we've negotiated. We want to be able to punch out and order those items from the supplier. We want to make sure the price is right and that we have online visibility to a contract. That's the benefits of the spend management program. So how do we start? The the key, I think, for all organizations is to understand what that sourcing process should look like. And there's a simple eight-step process that any industry would use, whether it's a new car dealer, uh, whether it's a manufacturing company or a service provider. If they need a supplier or service, they should go through these eight steps. One, be clear about the business requirements and strategy. Two, source the suppliers and qualify them. Three, develop your RFQ and then go out to quote. Four, analyze those quotes. Five, develop your solution. Six, recommend that solution to your management and notify the suppliers. Make sure you thank them for their participation. Seven, implement the solution. And then eight, manage the supplier. Make sure that the employees internally are using the right supplier uh, by uh, conducting an audit and then reporting those results. So that's the eight-step sourcing process everybody should have in place today. Here's another way to look at that, the five levers of expense management. Another, This is an alternative to that eight-step process. And you can look at this. This is a uh, something we developed at Strategic Source years ago called the five levers of expense management. And it really focuses on the requirements. What do we need? The second bucket, the second lever, rather, what, what's the best solution look like? Well, we want to standardize. We want to get down to one supplier. Uh, third, what are the financial uh, implications of this? Well, we want to focus on price and terms, delivery, get a fixed uh, period of time. The fourth lever is really process. How do we buy this item? How do we, can we order uh, online? Can we pay for it with a credit card instead of cutting a check? How do we execute it? And then the fifth lever, is really on the compliance side. What does compliance look like? Can we measure internal compliance, supplier compliance? Again, this is an alternative sourcing process, but ultimately it's going to lead to improved efficiency and effectiveness, improved control, profitability, and sustainable cost reduction. So you should either adopt this or the or the previous slide with the eight-step sourcing process for all of your supplies and services. What's the impact of effective spend management strategies? Well, let's talk about the effective side. On mission, we're going to control up to 130 expense categories in a dealership. We should be able to reduce spend by 20%. We should have a sourcing plan. We should secure long-term pricing in terms of kind of a least total cost approach. We, could we should focus on high usage items. 
we should have a narrow supply base. We should have corporate directed suppliers, not everybody making their own decisions. Um, we should have high performing suppliers that are that are actively supporting us. We should have policies, controls, all designed to reduce risk. We should have um, planned audits and our resources should be trained. They should have category expertise. The ineffective side, um, you know, groups that don't have good spend management practice in place have a narrow scope, they overpay, there is no plan, they're focused on tactical hot buys, their focus is only on price, not on terms and process. They have too many suppliers, no controls, increased risk, no audits, no training. We want to avoid this, we want to move to this. So when we create a spend map, there's really, uh, and, and we start to develop a plan, there's three sources of that data. There's data that's coming out of the DMS system, let's call that the enterprise system. But that's everything you paid your suppliers uh, over, and, and I typically recommend a 12 month backward look. We're gonna wanna get data from credit card purchases and any ACH transfers. The three of those components we're going to want to look at that data, throw out what is not related to purchasing, and then code it all so that we can uh, end up with a spend map. This is an example of a, of a dealership group. Uh, this is accounts payable data that came out, the GL account code, the vendor name, the GL description, how much we paid that supplier in the last 12 months. And what you're going to have to do is just go in and, and insert a code. Automotive tires, automotive rentals, background checks, business services. It's pretty simplistic, but once we code all those expenses, then we can arrive at a spend map. So here, um, this document lists all of the expense categories in the dealership alphabetically. This is the category name. We spent a million, two thousand dollars. We had 63 suppliers. We know that if we attack this category, we'll probably generate about 4% savings based on on uh, benchmark data. So we think that we can save about $40,000 by going after this category. And if we pay the vendor with a credit card, we can throw off another 12,000. So this is an alpha spend map and it's used for planning purposes. I'm gonna show you a couple of other versions. Now we take that alpha spend map and now we run it in descending order so that we can understand what are the biggest opportunities to the smallest opportunity. We don't want to spend a lot of time on <laughs> first aid and band-aids when we can be up here working on DMS. We prioritize it now. In this case, we highlight everything in yellow that we want to attack um, from those spend categories. And then now we turn it into a plan. Now everything that was previously yellow is now in green. This becomes our sourcing plan for the next year. We're going to attack 30 categories. These are the categories. Um, we think we're going to spend, based on historical, $17 million, and we think we're going to throw out about another $1.5, $1.7 in savings. So this is the essence of building a work plan, determining, your, determining the purchasing strategy for your organization. If you don't do this, it's going to happen anyway. People are going to continue using suppliers, but they're going to continue overpaying suppliers by 25%. So my suggestion is let's get let's get our arms around the data, let's build a plan, and then let's go after these categories methodically so that we can generate those savings. Assessing your organization. We've got a number of tools out here, um, but we can tell you again, if you know what your revenues are today, if you're a $400,000 or $400 million group, you know, plan on four or 5% of that is going to be your spend. Um, but we do have a report that we can provide you with to, you know, if you can plug in your revenues, we can show you what the likely spend and likely savings uh, is available. Just, uh, just request that through us. We'd be happy to provide that. We also have a best practice assessment if you're interested in this, and I'd encourage you to do this. This is the 15 areas of an organization that you need to get under control in order to have a, a good spend management function in place. Your structure, your policies, your resources, your objectives, 
data, and so forth. We can provide this tool to you. This explains in detail what that area is. You can kind of self-grade yourself, and then when you do that, it will produce a, a chart that looks like this. So if we were looking at best practices for dealership X, we can see here that their purchasing policies are in good shape, they're all green, and their implementation skills are, are great. But anything in orange needs to be, to be tweaked a bit, and anything in red needs to be fixed. So that best practice assessment, if you're honest with yourself, put that together, we can provide that to you and it'll give you kind of an internal checkup uh, in terms of what needs to be addressed in your organization. Now we're gonna talk about strategies to get sustainable cost reductions. We're gonna talk in detail about a number of categories here that you should be able to kind of assess your current standing and, and maybe uh, you know for the information we provide, decide to go after these categories and start taking costs down today. There are 150 categories out there in an auto dealership. When we first started this in 2000, I was ignorant and naive enough to think that there were about 30 expense categories. I didn't understand dealerships 20 years ago. Today, I don't think we know it all, but we know a lot more. Uh, than we did. And there's 150 categories out there from, and this is sorted alphabetically. So today your groups are probably uh, spending money in, in probably 100 of those 150, but those are the options. Now, from a positive perspective, those are the levers that you can pull to reduce and manage your expenses. So there's a number of options out there for you. Additionally, there are audit and recovery categories out there. We've got those listed here where maybe you've overpaid on sales tax, maybe you've overpaid on your telecom or your unemployment tax. So there are audit and recovery opportunities that you should consider as well. There are consultants out there that can help on your expenses in these areas. And then interestingly enough, our guys, uh, our sourcing team over the past few years have developed new revenue categories. So these are categories where you can add top line to your uh, revenue buckets. Maybe you take glass and installation in-house, maybe uh, paintless dent repair, maybe nitrogen generation systems. But right here is 157 different options that you can either address expenses uh, or uh, recovery, audit recovery, or maybe new revenue opportunities. So take a deep look at that, and, and I'm sure it'll trigger a lot of opportunities for you. Now we're going to get into some detail. Office supplies. Everybody uses office supplies. And this is a chart that once you get familiar with it, we're going to use it about nine more times in this presentation. And we've got different revenue bands up here, 50 million, 100, 200, 500 million. What your projected spend will be based on our data. You don't have this data, but this is our data. You can back into the percentages, but we think a $50 million group is gonna spend 19,000 on office supplies. $500 million group is gonna spend about 191,000. The savings target that you should have, and this is based on my team's sourcing results is 16%. So a $50 million group, if these numbers hold up, should be able to generate about $3,000 in office supply savings, nine, 16, or 30,000 respectively. Here's some of the strategies. Now you can you can go after invoice relief. You can go and say, look, you know, Mr. or Ms. Supplier, we would like some uh, COVID relief. Can you can you cut us? You know, cut our fees by 20% for a period of time. We had a lot of this going on. Uh, between March and July of, of this year, uh, less so today. But another opportunity is to ne renegotiate with your suppliers or go out for quote. Some other comments. Um, uh, on office supplies, you want to limit supply choices to high usage, low cost items. So don't give your employees a catalog and say, buy your office supplies. Rather, have a an RFQ that says, here's what we're going to buy in the organization, and here's what you can have access to. You want to supply or try to consolidate down to a preferred supplier, 
and then have a backup supplier and get rid of the rest because it's just costing you money and you're losing leverage. Try to sole source when you can. You might want to request a 5% annual volume rebate. We've seen that happen. And in some areas of the country, particularly in the East Coast, um, if you switch suppliers on office supplies, you can sometimes get signing bonuses from office supply companies. So that's the way I've got these charts set up here to give you the maximum amount of information. And then we got a little bit of advice over here. So get a usage report from your suppliers, build an RFQ, quote the, quote the results, determine the high usage uh, items in there that you want to focus on, finalize your analysis, negotiate a discount off list. So let's assume for a minute there are 200 high usage items that you're always going to buy, but you're not gonna buy chair mats all the time or, or furniture all the time. But when you're, while you're negotiating with your, your vendor, negotiate a discount off list on those unusual items that you buy infrequently, because that can bring your costs down and uh, or increase your rebate dollars. Make sure you advise your suppliers of your decision, thank them, this is not an easy task to go through and fill out an RFQ for you, uh, but make sure you thank them for their time and then implement the solution. So that's office supplies. There's there's dollars to be had out there. The market changes all the time, and that's one you ought to attack. Another one is janitorial supplies. I won't go through all the detail, but you understand now we're looking at $1,500, $200, $500 $500 million. What the spend is probably going to look like in your company. We know that the savings target is about 16% based on strategic sources, sourcing operation, our historical numbers, and what that would potentially translate into dollars. Here's some strategy. You can inquire about invoice relief, but you can certainly renegotiate. You can quote. Again, you want to limit your uh, supply uh, choices here. Try to get down to a single preferred vendor and a backup. Look for redundancies, shut off services that, that aren't required right now. Um, <clears throat> if supplies are built into a janitorial services contract, you may want to pull them out <clears throat> because that becomes a big profit center for uh, service providers. They make money on the supplies they sell you. You're better off to buy those direct. So the advice, Get a usage report from your suppliers, build an RFQ, quote it, finalize the analysis, negotiate discount, advise suppliers, implement. This is a good one to throw off some, some additional savings. And office supplies and janitorial supplies can often be purchased from the same supplier competitively, which will reduce your supplier base and simplify your back office. So consider that. Uniforms and laundry, everybody's favorite category. Uh, here's the projected spend based on, um, uh, on these revenue bands. The target savings is about 15%. You see what that number translates to. If you're halfway through your contract, um, the supplier is under no obligation to do this, but usually you've got a pretty good shot at going in and renegotiating if you like that supplier. So if you're in month 17 of a 36 month contract or, or month 19 of a 36 month contract, you might wanna pick up the phone and say, look supplier, we like you guys. How would you, uh, we're willing to extend our term of engagement if you're willing to renegotiate pricing today. They may say yes and if they, if they do, then you know it's time to renegotiate, get some benchmarks. Uh, and if your contract is coming up for um, uh, expiration, then it's a wise time to build a quote and go out for quote. There's a lot of service fees in a uniform uh, engagement that you don't have to pay for. You don't have to pay for the environmental fees, the wastewater fees. You don't have to buy insurance. Uh, you don't have to pay a separate pickup and delivery charge, you can negotiate all of that stuff out of those agreements. There are rebates available. Um, everything is negotiable on those programs. Just because they put a price 
and an item in front of you doesn't mean you have to pay for it. So look at your contract end dates, attempt to renegotiate if you're more than halfway through, and if you like your supplier. Finalize with new pricing um, or go out to quote with, with new suppliers, finalize your analysis, make a decision, and then implement. This is a, you know, there are some high integrity vendors in the in the uniform space, and there are others who will throw a cheap price at you today and they'll raise it in 90 days. And the only way you can protect yourself is to get it locked into a contract with good escape provisions. So uh, let the buyer beware, caveat emptor in this case. Waste and recycling, same methodology. You can see what the spend should look like, what the savings percent is. We think your target should be around 26%. This is a good opportunity to leverage suppliers got too many suppliers, um, let those contracts lapse and, and roll them into one. Again, try to renegotiate if you're more than 50% <clears throat> through. Finalize your container sizes. You may not need a 20-yard container. You may get, be able to get by with a 10-yard picked up in the same frequency. So don't assume that your requirements that you have today are right. Now that COVID is it, maybe we're generating less waste. Maybe we're generating more, but but challenge the business requirements. Don't just assume that what you bought a year ago is what you need to buy today. The next one is health insurance. Boy, has this one got an opportunity to it. Um, about 36%, there's a number of companies out here, you know, that, that if you're smaller than 100 employees or, uh, you know, they have a traditional health insurance plan, there's a number of suppliers out here that can help you with that. If you are greater than 100, there are opportunities to self-insure. And I'd highly encourage you to look at that. Um, there's a company out there that, and we don't take a penny from a supplier, not even a cup of coffee. So we have no skin in the game, but there's a group out there called Level, Level Funded Health um, that we can put you in touch with if you're interested in this. Um, but the savings can be, uh, pretty significant to, to larger organizations. But irrespective of your size, health insurance is one that you ought to be out going out to market for. Things are changing. So we talked a little bit earlier about revenue opportunities. We're going to just touch on a few of those categories. Paintless dent repair. Um, you got two options here. You're probably farming out paintless dent repair to vendors and you are paying them. And if that's the case, um, there are savings opportunities of around 15%. One of the other opportunities is to bring a, bring a supplier in, have them train your folks, and, um, and you start providing those services. We've got a, a company out here that we've had really good luck with called Dinking, and uh, they'll train your folks. They'll train for a period of five years so that you can bring that in-house and start throwing off a whole a whole bunch more top line revenue. So that's one idea. Another one is bringing auto glass in house. Now you've got it the same choice. You can either continue to spend money with 10 or 15 different glass companies um, at diff varying different discount rates, or you can bring that glass replacement and that capability in house and generate top line revenue. Start competing with the glass shops down the street. Another opportunity is uh, the virtual card, the purchasing card. We encourage our clients to pay for as many services on a credit card as you can. It's simple. The cash back is between one and a quarter and sometimes as high as 2%. Um, and it's all auditable. We know that the dollars are there. We can prove that they're there and it's a good, good way to improve cash flow in an organization. So we call it a P-card or a virtual P-card. So we've covered a lot of ground here in 30 minutes, uh, but there are opportunities as we look at this executive summary. There are opportunities for companies to reduce costs and improve profitability, no question. There's a, 157 ideas we've given you in that one chart, but that opportunity is about 25% of your annual spend. Annual spend should be roughly 4 to 5% of your annual sales. Um, there are 60 to 130 
expense categories to manage in most uh, industries in the automotive space, we've already identified 157. You will need short-term and long-term sustainable cost savings to enhance your profitability. If you're going to go through all this work to try to improve pricing, wouldn't it make more sense to lock that pricing in place for 24 months rather than three months? If you don't ask your vendor to lock that pricing in, they certainly won't. So the strategy ought to be, let's develop our plan, let's execute the plan, let's request long-term pricing, 12, 24, 36 months, and then lock that in. We've given you nine categories, nine opportunities here to look at specifically today. But now is really the time to get started. We're in December. We're starting to plan for 2021. Now is a perfect time to get that spin map developed and have a roadmap for 2021 that says, here's what we're going to do across the organization to bring 100,000 or 500,000 more net profit to the organization. Again, We've got a best practice assessment on here that we'd be happy to uh, share with you. That'd be a good start. Do this and then start building your spend map. Uh, just reach out to us at, uh, at Dan Driscoll. He's our director of marketing. Um, Dan can give you the presentation materials, um, but I understand Rachel is providing that, but Dan can also get you the uh, best practice assessment if you're interested. Yes, I can. Doug. Um, thank you so much for joining us today. What a great and informative presentation. And again, welcome to the AIADA Affinity Partner family. Again, you'll be receiving a copy of this webinar by next week. I know Doug went over a lot of information, so if you'd like the deck sooner, you can email me or, or Dan, like Doug said. To those on the line, join us back here on Thursday, December 17th as we close out the year with a 2020 auto market update and projections for 2021. For more information about AIADA, visit AIADA.org. Thanks for joining us, everyone, and have a great day.